name is Emily. Today we're here at South Florida Shooting Club. We've got Brad Kidd, national champion. We've got David Radulovich, VTAS world champion. Today we're gonna to be comparing some of their similarities and some of their differences, how they think through the different shots. Um, Brad, what are you gonna teach us today? Well, hopefully a lot. We're gonna talk about technique, form, stance, movement, a lot of good stuff. Um, and you'll be able to compare and you know see what I do versus what you know one of the best in the world, David Radulovich does. I think you'll learn a lot. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, we'll uh, we'll work a little bit on body mechanics, hold points, stance, uh, break points, how to read a target line better. Uh, so hopefully you guys will get a lot of good information out of this, and it'll be good. Woo! All right, David. So talk us through how you set up and how you approach every single shot. Right. So basically one thing we really got to pay attention to uh, while we're shooting targets is our, our central balance in our body. If our balance goes off center, uh, we totally lose control of the gun and we have to compensate other parts of our body and our movement to bring the gun back to the target. So if we have a really conscious focus on the way that our body is uh, standing and balanced while we move and what we're using to move while we do it, we can, we can shoot a target much more efficiently, much more slowly and calmly. That's why you see a lot of the really good shooters look like they're shooting really effortlessly when they're out on the course. And how, what's your foot positioning? What's your, where's your weight? Is it 50-50 on both legs? Right, yeah, so the weight distribution is, is really important to balance, obviously. So the only way you can truly be perfectly balanced, like a central point of balance within your body, is to have 50-50 weight distribution on each foot, but not just on each foot, also in the front and the back of our feet. So if we're leaning forward on our toes, that's bad. It creates tension and we have to fight our body and gravity throughout the shot. If we're leaning on our heels and you finish the shot stepping backwards, it's just like golf, you lose, you lose lose accuracy so uh, yeah weight distribution has got to be perfectly even the other part about it is in terms of your stance you know rotation is really important in shooting too we don't want a lot of people move in the wrong spot of their body so you know uh, you'll see a lot of people moving with their hands and there's a lot of tension in the shot and you'll see that if your body is moving like this. Well, if we bring that movement down lower and we're rotating in our whole body, okay, then we want to have more of a closed stance uh, okay. because the further apart your stance is, the more boxed you are in that rotation, and then you'll end up forced into using your upper body or your shoulders to move the gun. Okay, so 50-50, 50 forward, 50 back. Mm -hmm. um, talk us through where, what is your gun mount like? Where are you? putting it on your face. Yeah, so posture is also extremely important with that. Uh, so not just your body posture, but the gun, the, the way that the gun comes into your body. So not only do we want the weight distribution and all that stuff, but we also want to stay, stand pretty straight. Any, any bending in our body, we're going to get some tension and lock our rotation up and not be able to do it. So uh, you take that, and then in terms of the way that the gun comes into your shoulder, kind of the most natural position for the gun to come into anybody's shoulder, and I'll demonstrate right here, is if I take the gun and I basically point it up at a 45 degree angle off of the ground. If I do that, that's when the gun comes most naturally into my cheek and my shoulder. Okay, if I don't do that, watch what happens in my shoulder pocket right here. Okay, you see how it's it's on my face, right, but not on my shoulder. If I do it, you know, there's it's all wrong. So basically, what I need to do, mount at a 45 degree angle off the ground, okay, with the gun on my shoulder. And then to get at the target level, what I want to do is bend the core of my body down. But it's also important while I'm doing that to make sure that I maintain a central point of balance. So there's a difference between leaning forward and bending forward. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so here we've got two hard crossing targets. Yeah. Um, let's see a show pair and then just maybe walk us through your break point, your look point. Yeah, of and course. So, forth. so we'll go ahead and look at them. Pull. Okay, so for this shot, once I've established my break point, which is going to be somewhere out here, for me it's going to be right as it starts to fall. So I'm keeping it in a flat line. I've established my break point. I'm going to come back about 65% of the way of the line from my hold point, just so I'm not so close that I get beat by the target or too far out that I have to wait for. We want to have enough time to establish a connection. My focal point is going to be as far back in the line as I can be. Uh, with and see the bird. So for me, I'm all the way on the trap. If your eyes don't work that fast, just put your eyes in a spot that you can be so that the target doesn't go past them. 
Oh. So basically, as we finish the shot, we want to make sure that you don't have to stand back up. It's going to be a good way to understand if you're, if you're staying in balance with good posture throughout the whole shot. All right, Brad, so we just saw David take that shot. Mm -hmm. um, tell us your similarities and differences with that exact target. Well, there's a lot of similarities in how we you know, stand and move and how we think in terms of uh, uh, that regard. There's a little technical difference. Um, what I'm really trying to, to, to do is cut the bird off. So I'm trying to figure out where in the sky can I get to the bird, get in the gun and on the bird. My game is all about feel and vision. Uh, if I can match that speed from somewhere between the bird and the lead uh, for a long enough period of time, what happens is the, the bird appears to slow down to me. Once it feels slow, that's when I'm going to deliver the shot. So all I'm really trying to do is figure out how to get the bird cut off, get to the bird, move with it for you know a given amount of time. Once it feels slow, I'm going to deliver the shot. Now what happens, but what I think about in terms of uh, it, it, autopilot for me, my hands are going to stretch to the lead. They're going to kind of go out there on their own. Um, so my, ba my game is more of a feel-based game, less of a lead-based game. But all the things that are important to David, uh, soft hands, balance, movement, you know, matching the speed of the bird, that's all, that's all very, very similar. I probably play the game from a little bit less lead, uh, a little more time in the gun. Okay, so it sounds like you're saying I'm going to match the speed and then give it the lead that's required. So we'll see a pull away in yours? Yeah, you should see a pull away in mine. Now, again, I'm not the one that gives it the lead required. That happens when the slack's out of the trigger without my knowledge. It's, it's all about me keeping my hands unbelievably soft and giving my hands to the eyes. So if I keep my eyes on the bird, keep the tension out of my hands, match the speed for a beat, my hands should go on their own at the end of the shot. All right, let's see a shot. You got it. All right, now we're gonna take a look at a view bird. I'm gonna establish my pickup points. Pull. All right, based on what I've seen, I like to look about a yard out from that machine, and based on what I felt with my hand, my hole point's going to be right there, about 10 to 15 yards out from the trap. I've established my pickup points, where I'm going to start my eyes and where I'm going to start my hands, basically to be able to get my hands and eyes to the bird at the earliest possible moment. I'll get in the gun, I'll get the gun shouldered and on the bird at the hole point or to that little bit of space that I'm looking for on this fast crosser. I'm going to match that speed till the bird feels slow. Real important that I set my feet, my stance, my ankle to toe line for my break zone. I want my body to unwind through the shot. I'm very critical about keeping my hands soft, keeping my eyes out there in the field on the bird, not on the gun. Uh, going to get a little bit of feel when the bird feels slow. I'm going to deliver the shot. You should see on the shot cam video the hands stretch away from the bird out to the lead when I fire the shot. So let's see what that looks like. Pull. Pull. ask uh, David and Brad some of the questions that we often get asked in our comments. Uh, what is your left hand doing? What is your right hand? Where are you steering? And what is your grip on that forend? All right. Well, what's kind of funny about this is, is in, in a way, the entire movement is the body. It's zero hands. Right. What we're trying to do, okay. envision that this shoulder is actually pointed somewhere. Okay, and there's a specific shoulder angle, body angle that, that, that is going to be a fixed position for me. So I'm using my ankles to rotate. I'm using my back and my torso to get, you know, my up and down motion. So my hands are, are really doing nothing. The, the body is doing the entire move. Now, truly what I've done is I've put the entire game into the hands. 
I'm looking for my hands just to die, to leave all the tension, to be soft as they can be. The big movement of the clay is with the targets, and I fully give my eyes, or give my hands to my eyes, and just let my hands kind of tell my eyes where to go. I, I kind of stay out of the way in, in terms of that. I want good balance, good rotation, good physical motion with the bird, eyes on the bird, let the hands go. David, what is your, are you kind of pointy with your, with your left hand? Do you have, what yeah. is your finger like? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very similar to Brad uh, in the way that he described that. Uh, but so my hand when I shoot is under the gun. Okay, the reason for that is depending on your hand, whether it's, go ahead yeah. and demonstrate. Well, we're, we're the same. Yeah. What we're looking is, is the support of the gun, but it, we have to be under. All right, if I were to say, hold up this heavy weight for as long as you can, are you gonna come in here and take that weight like that? No, you're not gonna be able to hold it very long. You come in under where you feel like this elbow, the shoulder, everything's in a nice good line, under the gun, supporting the weight of the gun. We like to point that finger, that's a natural pointing motion, you know, if we're pointing at something moving through the sky. So I've got good form. I, I really care about this wrist, this front hand wrist. I want that wrist nice and straight, not bowed and cocked. So when you see guys get on the side, cock that wrist and get up in there, that's bad form. I'm looking to come underneath, support the weight of the gun. Keeping that wrist straight is going to guide that gun more inside. I'm not looking to be out on the arm. Uh, so that's the front hand shooting position for me. Yeah. Okay. The more, if your hand is less under the gun, so I hold my hand like this because it takes my hands out of the shot. I'm trying to move, like Brad said, with my body, not my hands. If my hand comes over to the side, I'm going to be pushing and pulling the gun. Okay. And that's bad. You lose control and precision. If my hand is underneath more and I bring this part of my elbow down under, then I gain more control in, in, in the movement of my gun. Yeah, what you're going to see in motion with me, with David and myself, when we, when we, you're not going to see this happen. You're not going to see our hands push the gun. It's all going to stay as a fixed frame and kind of move together. Yeah. Um, so when I see students doing that, I know what's happening. You're using your hands for big motion and you've taken them away from what they're really there for, which is the surgical part of the game, the precision motion, okay. um, the micro adjustments that need to be made. So my hands are moving inside a zone of like that, and my body is doing you know, the big move with the bird. That's cool. The important thing when you're gonna get jammed and let the bird pass you is not to panic. What kind of chokes, uh, what kind of chokes are you guys using in your guns? I'm staying up higher on the line. Okay. I'm supplementing a lot of physical movement with m more eye work. Um, David, so we get a lot of questions about how guns pattern. Mm -hmm. um, talk us through if that is important to you, what your gun does. So my eyes are gonna be down here and I'm watching the target come up to my gun and I'm gonna shoot it right at the top. To sign up for more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel below, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, or subscribe to our exclusive email list at the bottom of our website.